Hi everyone, welcome back to our ongoing series on how to create a life operating system in Notion. I'm very excited about today's video because we're introducing a new feature that I have wanted in Notion ever since I moved to Notion from Airtable, and that's the ability to group database views by any property. So you have groupings, clustering each list of database entries by various property settings. I'll show you exactly what I mean. But this is something inherent in Airtable from the beginning, at least from the beginning of when I used it, and I really missed it coming into Notion. But not only has Notion brought this capability into Notion databases, but it has taken it several steps further with each grouping being a toggle and the ability to apply this not only to tables, but also to gallery view, timeline view, lists, and so many more other ways to view the data and still get that grouping by various property settings. So let's dive right in. I'll show you exactly what I mean and why I'm so excited about it. Then after I show you how it works, I'll talk a little bit about where I see this being valuable in the Pillars, Pipelines, and Vault system or really any comprehensive system using Notion. So let's dive right in. So here's a standard Notion table with lots of data entered. And that's where it becomes valuable when you have larger collections of data that are grouped by different types, for example. So you have a single select here. This is a duplication of the standard PPV tools and services database, but just for the purpose of a demonstration with a database that has a lot of entries in it. So it could be any database, it doesn't matter. I'll just use this as an example. But this one has this selector here that identifies each by type, which will be useful as we start grouping. So you go down, and you have all these entries by type. So now we have this new group feature over here, and that's where we're going to get this new grouping capability. First, I'm going to jump in and show you examples of what it looks like after it's been done, and then I'll show you from scratch how to do it because it's really simple. So first we'll go to table view, and you can apply this in many different types of views, not just table view. But this is the grouping already applied, so grouping is turned on, and we're not hiding empty groups here, but we can, that's a good thing to do and it's organized by whichever property you set. That's what it will group by. So we have set it to be grouped by type, which is this property of the type of entry it is. It's organized by various types. Each is under a toggle. You open the toggle, you get all the entries under that grouping. Open this toggle, all of them. Instead of having to set up a separate view under each toggle, it's automatically creating a series of toggle views for the entire database. It'll give you all these groupings that you can open and close by toggle, and it'll give you all the entries under it. And if you close them all, you'll get a nice clean view of all of them. So how do we get here from a standard Notion table? Let's remove this and apply none. So now we have the standard table view that we're used to. All you have to do is click group, choose what you wanna group it by, in our case, type. This will give you all these different selectors to choose from. I would recommend hiding the groups that are empty. It'll automatically give you a toggle and an entry for all of the types that you have set or whatever property you chose to group it by. And then you open and close them as you go. It's a brilliant way to very simply and easily get an organized view of all of your data, especially in larger databases where you have multiple items attached to different properties, such as a type or a status. You could similarly do this by status. So if instead of type, we did status. Now there are two status settings in here. The first one here is going to be no status set. And then you're gonna have the two status settings to review and actively using. You open either and they're both there. You can hide this one if you want and then it's gone. So now it's organizing by these two views. I find it's more useful when you have multiple groupings, but you know, it depends on your need. And you can very easily switch it back to type which I think is the optimal way to break this out into categories. Now, jumping on, we can also do this in list view. It's the exact same thing. So here we're in list view. If you open it up, you'll see each one is in list view. Exact same thing, all of these groupings organized by whatever property you choose. Again, we chose type, it could be anything. The way we did this is the same as the other one. So we went from none to changing it to type or whatever property you wanna group by. And again, I like to hide the no type, but it might be useful to have no type listed there. If you wanna make sure everything has a type, that'll identify the ones that need to be assigned a type. So moving on from list view, we can do this in gallery view. Same thing, now we've got gallery view organized by these different categories, each under a toggle. So each is under a different grouping of a property selector 
and it organizes the collections that way. This way is so fast and effortless and it just looks great when it's organized that way. All right, moving on beyond gallery view, we have board view. Board view has an extra bonus capability because board view is essentially already organized by groupings across the board settings on top. Now here we have these organized by, the grouping is set by type. So the categories here are by type, but then we have subset, you have a new feature here called subgrouping and you can have a second grouping. The first one will be the columns as with any board view. The second subgroup will be these toggles down here, which will be similar to what we've just seen in terms of the grouping. So on the board view, the initial grouping is the columns. The second subgrouping is the vertical hoggle categories that we have set. It's just a great way to add an additional organization to board views beyond just the columns. And the way you do that, again, is you just set the type here. Now, the type will be just as you've always done. This is not new in board view. What's new in board view is the subgroup. Here you can turn it on or off. Normal board view, if we're gonna turn it to a second organization setting. In our case, we will look at status. So that gives us the to review category and the actively using category and a no status, which will tell you which ones need to be assigned to status if you want them to have a status. Otherwise, you can just hide it and it's just the two that you're interested in. And then finally, we have the timeline view which also gives us the same groupings. Here the toggles are closed, but as you open each one, you get all of the ones that are set with dates. So you'd set the dates as you would with any timeline view, but it's now grouping them by whatever you choose to group them by, in this case, type. Now, in order to not show all of the ones that didn't have dates, I added a filter here. Date is not empty. Without this, it'll show all of the ones that whether they have dates or not. And that's not very useful in timeline view. You just wanna see the ones that do have dates. So you wanna filter, since timeline view will be based on a date, there will always be a date property. And you wanna set that it's not empty. Then that's going to only show the ones that have a date and those you can organize and sort just as always with timeline view. Super valuable to have them organized by section like this. Can you imagine looking at all your projects, the active projects, the next up projects, the future projects, the someday maybe projects, all by groupings. That's a perfect example of how this could be valuable. So just as usual, the way we did this is we went from none, which is the default of course, and we have our full list here, but they're not organized by grouping. To organize them by grouping, you just select type or whatever property you wanna organize them by. And they will group by whatever you select. You can open just the two you're interested in seeing side by side. That one didn't have one, this one should have some. And it's just a great way to organize your information. So relatively simple to implement, but so valuable and so helpful. It's the thing I missed most from Airtable, aside from the API. And it's awesome to have this, not only in Notion now, but turbocharged in a super enhanced version that lets us have a lot more freedom and capability across a wide range of views. So I see a lot of ways to use this in pillars, pipelines, and vaults, or really any system. If you're looking at tasks, you can organize them grouped by project. You can have them organized grouped by owner or the person in charge of them. If you're working on a team, projects again can be organized by active, next up, future, whatever your sequence is. Same thing with goals. You can have your habits and routines grouped by bundles. We talked about bundling habits and routines together to introduce new ones and attaching them to the same time period, the same group. When you do something that you're already good at doing, you add a new habit to do with it. Instead of trying to do it on its own, you bundle it with another habit. You could look at a views of your grouped habits and routines, super capable there. Obviously the tools and services database, we have all these entries. You do it by status as was in the example. Can you imagine the knowledge vault? You can now group them by pillar, making pillars a more visible and active categorization setting in your system. So any database that's linked to pillars, which is most of our systems, you can now use pillars as a grouping as you organize large rows and rows of entries into subcategories that make it easier to interpret and digest at a glance. So, so many examples, really anything where you have a long, long list and you have multiple ones attached to the same tag or the same selector, same owner. You have multiple entries or tasks, for example, assigned to the same person. Anything that you have multiple entries assigned to a certain property, you can now group the view 
buy that property, making it so much more digestible and actionable. That's why I'm so excited about this. Hope you put it to good use in your system. If you have any additional ideas, share them in the comments below. Let's make a list of all the possibilities we can do with this new feature. Go ahead and experiment and let me know what you come up with. I have a ton of new videos planned in the pipeline, so if this is of interest, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get updates on future videos. Leave thoughts or questions below, or join us in our online community for a broader conversation. That's at yearzero.io, where you'll also find information on the Notion Life Design course that I teach. And please hit like if you found this video valuable. I also write a newsletter on increasing human capability. I give away several of my best Notion templates to anyone who subscribes to the newsletter. You can, of course, unsubscribe at any time, but I hope you'll give it a chance. I work super hard to pack it with a lot of valuable insight. The newsletter link is also below in the show notes. Thanks for watching. Lots more to come. Thank you.